So let's check, for example, from this point to this point. We have 0 ohm in the multimeter, means this point are connected together. Let's check the path, as you can see. Because the two points exist in the same path. We're going to see the current sense resistor. As you can see here, we have R020. So this means, as you can see, R020 means point, okay, 02 ohms because r refer to point when we began with r it refer to point as you can see equal point zero two approximately is a zero ohm so it's like a fuse okay this is a current sense resistor okay always you will find current sense resistor near to the power jack or to the battery connector okay to the battery Connector because it is always connected to the charge IC. Here also we have another example of current sense resistor as you can see. Always near to the power jack or to the battery connector. The same value you will find always or usually the same value. Okay. R020 means 0 0.02 ohms. Okay. So let's test or measure your capacity or the resistance of that resistor basically as you can see here we have graduation as you can see from 200 to 200 mega ohm okay but because the resistor is a very low resistor we cannot use this multimeter we have 200 we should use the diode option okay we can use the diode option to test it okay you can, if you have a multimeter with a low range, you can use it. As you can see here, we have 001, means exactly like a fuse, okay? Because its resistance is very low, as you can see. Let's test this also. We have 002, okay? This is a fuse. Basically, this is like a fuse, okay? So we're going to see how to test and check the switches the laptop motherboard switches or button okay so as you can see here we have this kind of switch so basically the switch contain two terminals main terminals one connected to the ground and the other is connected to 3.3 volt power rail so let's check this so this pin here is connected to the ground we have the dot here so now we're gonna check between these two pins basically one connected to the ground and the second is connected to 3.3 volt so let's check as you can see this is the pin that is connected to the ground okay so we're gonna now connect the two pins using the multimeter probe and press the button if we get any buzzer while pressing the button, as you can see, means the button is good, as you can see. When we press the button, means we shunt or we connect between two pins. Let's check this connector also. So this is the ground, so let's check. Okay, as you can see, the switch is okay. Okay, because when you press the switch, you get a buzzer, means you shunt between the two terminals, means the button or the switch is good, okay? So let's check this kind also of switches, as you can see. So here in this switch, two pins or two terminals are connected to the ground and we have the third one is connected to the power rail so let's check okay we can just put the black probe in the ground and put the red probe as you can see in the power rail as you can see so the switch is operated correctly so let's check the signal 
as you can see, the same working principle. So the both switch are get the LED or light emitting diodes. I'm going to teach you and to show you how to test and check these diodes. Okay. Here also, as you can see in this motherboard, we have four LEDs. Okay. As you can see here, these LEDs contain two diodes into it okay i'm going to show you how to test it here also in this motherboard as you can see we have four leds as you can see that we are gonna check using the multimeter of course okay so as you can see here led3 led4 okay so in every laptop motherboard you will find leds okay so there are some leds that is for the battery for wi-fi etc so we're gonna use the multimeter in the continuity option or buzzer option so let's check right now these leds as you can see here we have this white mark white mark means this is the cathode we should put here the black probe and into anode the red probe as you can see the led is eliminated okay a green light so let's check this also as you can see, we have orange light, means this LED is operated. So let's check this also. So we didn't get any light. We didn't get any lights in this LED. So let's check the fourth one. Here we get the green light, as you can see. So the LED is good. Okay. So let's check this also in this motherboard. As you can see here, we have basically two kinds of light emitting diode here. So let's check this first, the LED, the first LED as you can see. So let's check it using always the multimeter probe as you can see. We didn't get any light here. This NED can be failed. Probably this NED can be failed. Okay. So let's check the second one. Here we get a blue light. This is for Wi-Fi. Okay. Basically this NED is for Wi-Fi because always for Wi-Fi we get a blue light. But this one, no light here. Probably this LED is failed or we should check it when the laptop is on. So let's check right now this kind of light emission diode. It contains two diodes, okay, inside it. This is the first one, let's check. Basically, the light should be different. This is orange, as you can see, orange light. Let's check the second one. Here we have the gray, the gray light, as you can see. So this lead is, is good. So this also the second one, the same working principle. This is orange light for the first diode. The second one we have the gray light. So this LED also is good. So let's check this motherboard also. I'm going to show you many motherboards in order to go deeper into understanding the working principle of light emitting diode and how to test it using the multimeter. So let's check again this Lee LEDs so here we have orange light this is a good diode okay let's check the second one so no light no light here always this kind of diodes that is not eliminated we can't check it when we switch on the laptop so for those here this also is not eliminated anyway this kind of leds can be checked when you power on your laptop okay so let's check for example from this point to this point we have zero ohm in the multimeter means this point are connected together let's check the path as you can see because the two points exist in the same path hi everyone so in this video, I'm going to show you 
how to follow the path in electronic boards. So as you can see here, all these are parts, as you can see, these parts connect the components to each other. Okay, I'm going to show you how to follow these parts using the multimeter. I'm going also to show you how to test and check the serviceability of cables in order to know if the cable is good or not. So let's get started. Of course, we're gonna use the multimeter and we're gonna select the continuity option. As you can see here, this is the continuity option. So as you can see here in this circuit board, here, for example, we have a path, as you can see, this green color means a path. This path connect these four points, okay? So the four points should be shorted to each other because the, all points exist in the same path as you can see in the multimeter we have zero ohm means all points are connected together but for example this point is not connected to others because it exists in in another path okay here also as you can see all these points are connected together because all points exist in one path so let's check, for example, these two points, we have zero ohm in the multimeter. So let's check, for example, from this point to this point, we have zero ohm in the multimeter, means these points are connected together. Let's check the path, as you can see, because the two points exist in the same path. Let's check another path, this time a smaller one. So let's check. From this point to this point, as you can see, we have zero or means the two points are connected together. So let's follow the path, as you can see. The path, as you can see, connects the two points. That's why we get zero on. Let's check this also, as you can see. Here, so the two points are connected together because the two points exist in the same path. Okay, so this is the working principle of how you can troubleshoot any circuit board based on just the path, okay? Now, let's check the cables. Here we have a power cable, as you can see, with the three chain models, of course. So we're gonna check this cable using the multimeter, of course. So here, as you can see, we have three ten terminals. We have the line and neutral and the ground. So let's check the ground first, using the multimeter, of course. As you can see, we have a low resistance in the multimeter, about zero ohm, means the wire is not cut. Let's check this also. We should find zero ohm. We have about zero ohm. Okay, means this is good also. Let's check the other cable. Here also we have a low resistance, zero ohm. So means this cable is a good cable, okay? This is a serviceable cable. So let's check another cable. So this time we have a cable without ground, okay? We have this kind of cable without ground. So it contains basically two wires, two terminals. Let's check the first terminal, good. It's not cut. Let's check the second wire. As you can see, we have a low resistance, means also good. Now let's see an experiment in order to understand clearly the continuity working principle. Let's connect one side of this wire to one probe of the multimeter and the other free end to the second probe of the multimeter. Okay, now we connect the probes of the multimeter to this wire. Now let's power on the multimeter. As you can see, we have zero ohm, okay? Means continuity. If we cut the wire, as you can see, we have one in the multimeter, means open. Means there is no continuity. Show you how to check and test Zener diode. This is a Zener diode, okay? Or crystal diodes, okay? 
always you should locate first the cathode and the anode of the diode. As you can see here, we have D. The reference for the diode is D, as you can see. So first, let's put the multimeter to the diode option or the continuity option. And let's get started. So first, as I told you before, you should locate first the cathode. So the cathode is located with the band in the body of the diode, or as you can see, the black line or, or the black band means the cathode. So let's check the continuity first. And let's put the black probe of the multimeter in the cathode and the red probe in the plus or the anode. As you can see, we have a reading in the multimeter. This is a good diode. If we switch the probes, we should not get any reading, as you can see. Okay? Means this is a good diode. Let's check this diode also. So the black probe is in the cathode, where we have the band or the line, and the red probe in the anode, we get a reading. If we swap the probes, no reading means this is a good diode. Let's check this diode also. So, as you can see, the black probe in the cathode and the red probe in the anode, we get a reading. Okay, we have plus here, as you can see, the plus terminal or the anode. We switch the probes, no reading means this is a good diode. Okay. Here we got check other diodes. I hope that we find a bad diode. Normally a bad diode, when you get a continuity or a buzzer in the multimeter, means the diode is bad. Here, this white mark means the cathode. Okay, here we have D as you can see. So let's check. We should get a reading. As you can see, we get a reading in the multimeter. If we switch the probes, no reading. Easy, okay? Means the diode is good. Let's check the diodes, other diodes. We get a reading here. We should get a reading, it's okay. Let's check these two diodes also. As you can see, the white mark means the cathode. We get a reading. Here also we get a reading. So all these diodes are good. So if we swap the probes, no reading. No reading, okay? So this is how you can check the diode. Here, these diodes are SMT diodes or surface mounted devices, okay? And over here, we have THT diode or true hole technology diode. As you can see, we have ZD means Zener diode, as you can see. So, to test this kind of diodes, the same working principle. You should always get a ready in one side and in the other side, no ready. And here we have the terminals. That's why we call it THT, True Hole Technology Device. So, always you should locate the negative terminal or the cathode. Here we have the cathode. As you can see, the white mark means the cathode. Always the paint or the white mark means the cathode. So let's check and test these two diodes. So we should always locate the cathode. We get a ready in the multimeter. Okay. So if we switch the props, we should not get any ready. No ready means this is a good diode. Let's check the second diode. So here we have the cathode, we get a reading, if we swap the probes, no reading means this is a good diode, okay? So we have seen in this video how to test Zener diodes, SMD diodes and THT diodes.